we have a uh, with us now uh, a regular within the Columbia Business School and Hit Lab circle, uh, Glenn Tillman, a uh, three-time unicorn in digital health, non-existent, uh, but uh, also uh, going for his fourth unicorn uh, ring. I don't know what they call them, Glenn. What do they call them? Rings when you like when you swim, <laughs> like, get a ring. What do you get when you're a unicorn? I'm not sure what you get, Stan, but it's great to see you. Yeah, really great to see you too. For everyone who, uh, for anyone that's been living in a, a cave or just has never heard of the world of digital health before or biomedical informatics or health IT or HIMSS or those sorts of things, Glenn is the chief executive officer of Transcarent, which is a, a startup that was recently funded. Uh, but he was also the, he's the former executive chairman, CEO and co-founder, or founder rather of Livongo Health, uh, which was IPO last year, then sold to Teladoc. For 18.5 billion, one of the largest, if not the largest, digital health sale ever, and the second largest uh, on a multiple level of a tech sale. Uh, the only one being larger than that was with a tech company that sold on no revenues for uh, a couple billion. Uh, he's also, when you use the word visionary, you, you are not exaggerating with Glenn, because if you go back 25, 30 years, which is about the span of my career, uh, Glenn's been doing some pretty crazy stuff uh, when in the 90s when he uh, started Enterprise Systems and sold that off to HBOC, which was eventually bought by McKesson. Uh, and then he jumped into all scripts and redefined what uh, not only e-prescribing was, which was a term not used so much today, but in the 90s, e-prescribing was a rage. And then uh, he, he brought that public. Uh, and then uh, everyone knows about Livongo, or if they don't, they should be Googling it in Teladoc. And now transparent, uh, Glenn. How do you do it? I mean, where do you get the energy to do all this? This is crazy. Well, I think uh, first of all, again, it's always great to be with you, and and great to be with the folks on the phone. And I saw Don Jones was on uh, before this, and you know, talk about an accomplished uh, innovator and industry leader. Really, really terrific. So, uh, so you've got some great folks talking, but. Uh, Energy for me always comes from what you're doing and who you're working with. And, you know, I think if you're working on important problems and you're working with great people, to me, there's nothing that could be more fun. And it's, it's funny, people talk about, you know, work-life balance. I don't understand that because everything I do, I love doing. I love being at home. Sometimes I'm working at home. Sometimes I'm playing at work. Sometimes I'm doing things, but I'm you know, I'm always doing things that I think are important, that I think are valuable and fun, and that are going to make a difference. And, and I think that's what makes it so energizing. That's fantastic. And I know just, you know, from, well, you know, one of our Hit Lab senior leaders is Brian Bertha out of the Bay Area and, and all the work you guys do with the American Diabetes Association on their board. Even in your, your casual time, you're, you're really making a difference for a lot of folks around the country, around the world. But one of the places that you've made a tremendous difference has been in the Columbia Business School Digital Health Program, where you regularly lecture and give talks uh, and really, you know, in a really uh, nice setting, talk to what's going on and what the difference is in the startups and, the, and really the, the unicorns that you've led between learnings and failures. And you really say they're, they're only failures if, if you don't learn from them. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that for a lot of the startups in the audience today? Sure. Well, you know, that's one of the most frequently asked questions, which is tell us about when you fail. And uh, there's, I always quote Thomas Edison. He said, uh, I've never failed. I just found 10,000 ways that wouldn't work. And um, I, I think, as you've already said, that it's only a failure if you don't learn from it. You know, failure, that's what we call experience. And, you know, we hire people and I love hiring people who haven't been successful at a particular task because they learned so much about what wouldn't work. And that way you don't make the same mistake again. You say, oh, I tried it that way. That didn't work, this didn't work, that didn't work. And um, so it's really all about learning. And you know, that's what I think we can take away. You know, I don't believe people who say we ought to celebrate failure. You know, that's a little extreme for me, okay? Um, we should celebrate winning. But we shouldn't, the fact that someone is experimenting, is brave enough to try, we should never punish people for doing that. And frankly, we should reward people for um, trying different things until something, they find something that works. And, and I think that is the story of being an entrepreneur. That's the story of innovation, which is trying things, doing things, not talking about them, 
actually going out and doing them, you know. And I like to say innovation begins by doing something. You know, lots of people talk about it, less people do it. How many times have you heard somebody say, I had that same idea? Really? What'd you do with it? Nothing. So innovation is about doing stuff when you're out there, when you're engaged, when you're on the field. You're going to make mistakes, uh, but you got to just keep learning and just keep getting better. No, that's fantastic. And, and clearly that's something that's been a hallmark of what you've done. I mean, <clears> making and, a lot of mistakes has been a hallmark. Yep, that's true. That's true. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> you, Because you've learned in mid-stride with a lot of your startups and you've adapted, you've pivoted. And Darwin never said the actual phrase that everyone quotes, which is survival of fittest. He actually never wrote that or said that. But what he actually wrote was that the species that survives are the ones that are able to best adapt and adjust to the changing environment which it finds itself. And whether you go back to enterprise management systems or all scripts or Lavongo, you all had, you had digital unicorns there, but they all required pivots. Are you really an adaptable unicorn is the is the art of the Tolman pivot required reading for our students at Columbia Business School studying digital health? Well, um, I haven't heard it quite said that way, but you're, you're absolutely right. Look, more than ever today, um, both the ability to adapt to changing environments, um, the ability to pivot, um, and the resilience to survive some of the challenges that we're all facing, you know, that is the hallmark of success in today's world. And if, if I was teaching, whether it be younger uh, kids, whether it be um, kids who are in university, whether it be kids who are 70 years old, all the same. And that is, you know, we are given what we're given. Nothing's going to stay the same. So you have to constantly, and it's not just about you. You know, there's a great quote that says, in a fight between you and the world, bet on the world. Okay, the world is changing. And if you stay the same, you're gonna get left behind. So you have to constantly be adapting. And you know, you can either wait for someone to do it to you, or you can do it to yourself and say, look, this is a change that's coming. Let's anticipate it and let's constantly be thinking about what would happen if, what happens if this changes, what happens if that changes. The best companies are doing that constantly all the time. And so, and it's a great exercise to constantly be turning your business upside down and saying, you know, again, at Livongo, what we said was strips are a real problem. Why are they a problem for people to get test strips? Well, there's a cost and there's a copay. And, and so we had this crazy idea. What if you just gave them for free? And people, well, you can't do, why can't we do that? Well, we reinvented the business based on that. We took the hurdles away because we were putting, we we're making it harder for people to stay healthy. So we said, if the goal is to keep them healthy, and now we're doing that at Transparent by eliminating all of the co-pays, all the co-insurance, all the billing, none of that is productive. And when somebody says it will cost you to do this, what they're saying is they're making it less likely for you to do it. So why would we ever want to make it less likely for people to take their meds or for people to go and get treatment unless we think it's going to get better? Um, so why would we put hurdles in front of people to use healthcare services that are going to keep them healthier? Just doesn't make sense. And so we are literally rethinking that in ways that seem kind of obvious um, if you want somebody to do something, don't put a big hurdle in front of it. And uh, if you think about it, what's free in healthcare? Well, what's free is you show up at the ER and they'll treat you um, no matter what. Well, that's the worst solution we can come up with. The best solution are preventive solutions where we provide incentives to keep people healthy and we make it easier. And that's what transparent is really about. So, so I think that that again, it's about the ability to pivot. It's about the ability to try new ideas and keep trying them until you find what works. That's uh, yeah, that, that seems to have worked well with you guys as well. And uh, 
Uh, you know, I think, you know, a lot like great rock bands over the last 30 or 40 years, uh, I want to, I want to do a shout out for Lee Shapiro, uh, because, <laughs> you know, I think it, it, it has to be said, I don't know if anyone's mentioned it before, but it has to be said, you guys are really stuck together. You guys are like the dynamic duo and you just, you, when you see great rock bands, they stick together over time through the tough times and the good times and the bad times. And you guys have done it. So kudos to you both for doing that and figuring this out. Well, let me say one thing about Lee. Lee has been an incredible partner. I, I feel very, very fortunate to have a great business partner like Lee. Um, but Lee does something that's incredibly irritating and he's done it for 25 years. And that is after every meeting, every presentation, he gives me a list. And the list is a list of things that I've done wrong or a list of things that I should have done or should have said. And uh, so one time I, I was at HIMSS and I was speaking a large main stage presentation and we've all had this. This was one where it really felt like I had hit the ball out of the park and people laughed at my bad jokes and they, they were nodding. And uh, I came off stage and there's Lee and he's got the list in his hand. And I said, Lee, just once, just once say good job before you hand me the list. And he said, that's not what you pay me for. You pay me to make you better. And that intensity of knowing that somebody is every day and at Transparent, what we say is when you leave a meeting, don't say, how did I do? That's a setup. Nobody's going to say you did, you didn't do well or very few people say, tell me two ways I can get better. And if you do that in every meeting, somebody says, oh, no, no, Stan, you did a great, no, no. I want to know two ways that I could have made it even better. And if we're constantly trying to make each other better, and that's what I think Lee and I have been great business partners in making each other better and complimenting. Lee had more work to do than I did, but we've been great business partners along the way. And, you know, the fact of the matter is we both love building businesses. We both love the people. And there's a great picture of us on mile 17 of the Chicago Marathon and somebody wrote under it, Glenn still has the list and I'm holding a list and I'm pointing to it, mile 17. We just thought it was a business meeting for three and a half hours. We were able to talk to each other about the various businesses. So we've had a great partnership and uh, I'm glad you called it out because he and, you know, he's been a rock for me and, and great for the businesses. I should mention also, I think he's done something that no one else in history has done. At Livongo, in 12 months, we did an IPO, the largest consumer digital uh, health IPO ever done. We followed that by a secondary offering a few months later. We followed that by a $550 million uh, convertible debt offering. And then we followed that by the $18.5 billion purchase all within 12 months. So I think that set a record for uh, the most transactions done in that period of time uh, in that sequence. So, and, and Lee led every one of those. Now it's incredible. It should be noted too that Lee has just joined the board of Click Therapeutics, which is a New York City based digital therapeutics company. Uh, again, Hit Lab's been studying those guys for a long time. Very excited about their diffusion rates that we're seeing in the ecosystem. Let, let's go back to your your process. I think if it was 2012, I would uh, 2013. I'd be doing two things. I was going back in time. I would number one be buying Bitcoin, and then number two, I'd be trying to find Glenn Tolman to find out what he does and how he evaluates his next big startup. And um, when you are identifying, evaluating, and really like putting yourself into another big startup, what's the process that you use to do that? How do you go through that? Well, I think there's three things and they, um, you know, they kind of sometimes the order changes, but first and foremost, you know, I'm at a point where I really want to work on big problems. Um, and, you know, look, you can make a difference for one person and that's great. But in my life, what I want to focus on is how do we have a big impact? What's a big problem? And so that translates into multi-billion dollar opportunities. So that's one screen that we use. The second is I've decided to focus my time and attention and efforts in the healthcare space by and large. Why? Because 
I want to make sure that the time I have is used to make a difference for the most people. And when we think about it, the most important thing we have is our health. It's not about money. It's not about anything else. Even education falls second to health because if you're not healthy, education, you're not going to class, you're not learning, you're just simply trying to be healthy. So it's not about money. We know lots of millionaires and billionaires who give all their money for another year of life. So health is first and foremost. And over the last year, more than ever, the entire world learned that you can't have a successful economy, you can't be successful as a person unless we first and foremost take care of our health, both individually and collectively. And, uh, you know, I, I like to think that if anything good came out of the pandemic, we understand that we're all one in health and we have to take care of the whole community, not just some of us, because that's how pandemics, all the bad stuff works at a meta level um, as opposed to an individual level. So from that perspective, very, very critical. Um, so one, big problem. Two, making a difference. And three, got to be passionate about it. And that's what drives the energy. So it's got to be fun and exciting and working with great people. And that's about building a team. So for example, I was, you know, I've been able to uh, grab some people who I've worked with in the past. John Halleck, I think, is on. John led communications, did an extraordinary job at Lavongo, and now is with me at Transparent. And, uh, you know, uh, that said, there's many companies I've been fortunate to be involved with in the past. And, you know, we're always looking to add new people and to bring on folks from our past companies. So, um, you know, that's how we build our businesses, get great people together and focus on the problem, do the work. You know, Edison also said that, that uh, most businesses are 1% or maybe he said genius is 1% uh, uh, innovation and 99% perspiration, something like that. And uh, it, it's about the lonely work. It's about, you know, doing the early and wait late calls. It's about the meeting before the meeting to prepare for it. So that's really what uh, what we focus on when we look at opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I think inspiration. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> messaging with the uh, with Justin, our production manager. He's telling me it's inspiration. <laughs> there we go. There we go. This thing was spot on. Well, Glenn, thank you very much. Always great talking to you. And uh, please uh, stay safe. And we'll talk to you soon again. I'm sure. Okay. Always great to see you. Thanks, Dan. Take care.